<laughs> I can't believe this. I can't believe this. My special guest tonight, I expected him to come in wearing a pair of jeans and a t-shirt. He's wearing a tuxedo. I can't believe this. I can't believe this. Good to see you, Ron. Pull up behind microphone. Let's, let's do this on the radio. Oh my God, we are loaded with people and video cameras and things. This is... I gotta tell you how this all came about. Sit down. Oh my God, look at this man. Let's all get in there. I even found my old Chicken Man album. <laughs> oh! You know, I was on Chicken Man. I know, I know. I found the guy. Where's the cover, guys? Right here. See? See that? Oh, gosh. The best of Chicken Man. I just spoke with Orkin uh, last uh, May, I believe, or something he's like that. He's still busier than Sin, isn't he? Oh, yeah. He's oh, got man. the Radio Ranch out in Los Angeles, you There's know. There's a lot of commercials. But let's talk about you before we talk about some of the other folks we'll end up talking about. Okay. Your radio career, this is kind of, I, I don't want to do this as your life because no. you only have four hours, but, <laughs> but I'm just blown away by, by your uh, tuxedo and everything. Well, I thought this I is some naked. class. This is a way to do radio. <laughs> Let me introduce you to Carol McGowan. Ron Carol, Britton. hi Carol, Ron Britton. You can call me King V. <laughs> Everybody else does. The FCC does, you know. <laughs> We first met when we were colleagues at WIND, right. and this goes way back into the uh, 1970s, I guess. Yeah, 1970, yeah. But you were on the radio long before that. Your career in Chicago radio began in 1965. By WCFL. CFL. And the AM station here is the old WCFL, our sports station. Yeah. So in a way, you've kind of come home. Yes, I will. Well, I'm studio is from home. Uh, one difference, though. I I don't get a paycheck anymore. <laughs> well, we'll write you a, we'll write you a, a phony one. Oh, no. no. <laughs> yeah, just don't cash it anymore. <laughs> well, I might pass some gas, but... Yeah. In 1965, Chicago had, to say the least, radio wars going on. Yeah, WLS and WCFL. WLS and WCFL, and it was war. Really? It was that uh, that that gang of super jocks on Super CFL. Right. That war with that bunch of crazies on WLS. Let's see if we can remember some of the names. At the time, you were uh, you guys were, were were the monsters over Super CFL. We, we had such talents as Jim Runyon was the morning guy, and Runyon. unfortunately uh, passed away. Uh, you know, a few years ago. Uh, then uh, Joel Sebastian. Joel also passed away a right. few years ago. Uh, another heavyweight. Yes, he was. Joel Sebastian. Oh, Joel was a terrific guy. Yeah. I mean, a real, a genuinely nice person like yeah. you, Ed. Thank and you, and and, you know, like Will Rogers says, I never met a man I didn't like. Well, in radio, I rarely meet a man I like. <laughs> I mean, they're all a bunch of jerks. <laughs> They really are, but Ed is a has got a good heart, and he is he, he is the best. Ed oh, Swartz you, is the best, and and I'll tell you what, why I say that is because I think a lot of people in radio um, are in it for I don't know why they're in it. I, I ask them a lot, and the, the, what the motivation is. I mean, I know you started, and I started. I started when I was like 12 years old, and the, I wanted to entertain people. I didn't get in it for the money or anything like that. I mean, that was just a byproduct. And of course, I'm not making any money now since I'm unemployed. <laughs> I'm getting an unemployment check, but uh, that's, uh, you know. Well, we can work on that. <laughs> well, no. uh, anyway, uh, I, I, can I put you down as a, I'm applying for a job? Absolutely. <laughs> Is there anything available? Uh, look, I'll, I'll ask. I'll, I'll put it in uh, just leave your resume with the boss, and I'll uh, use me as a reference. Yeah. Okay. okay, well, whatever. <laughs> I'd love to see you. But, but uh, uh, there, there are people in the business like you with a good heart that are trying to entertain people. You know, I was always embarrassed. Uh, I lived in the North Shore, and uh, I would go to parties, and there would be a doctor, and there would be lawyers, and there would be bankers, and there would be uh, rich. Captains of industry. Yes. And they'd say, and uh, uh, what, what, what do you uh, do? Uh, I said, uh, 
I'm a um, radio personality. And they said, uh, 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 what is that? And I said, well, uh, it's a disc jockey. <laughs> and they said, well, what do you do? And I said, oh, I say, it's 25 minutes past 6, and it's 32 degrees and partly cloudy. And they said, and you make money for that? And I said, yes, sometimes almost probably as much as you do. Uh, uh, and and um, I was embarrassed. I, I, I thought, why wasn't I something meaningful in life? Why wasn't I a brain surgeon or a, found a cure for cancer or something like that? And in my lowest moments, and you know we have a lot of low moments in radio, my son said, Dad, you've got the greatest job in the world. You're privileged to entertain people. And he was absolutely right on the money. And I've thought about that, and <clears throat> now I'm beginning to realize that maybe I wasn't a brain surgeon, but you, Ed, and people like you touch a lot of people's lives. And they, they, they do so much for people. Uh, you know, it's a small thing. I, I, I would go to appearances, and, and people would... Uh, 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 sort of look over the corner, and they, you know, you knew that they were looking at you. And they say, oh, it's Ron Griffin. And then they come over and they say, uh, Ron, um, I get introduce myself, and they say, uh, uh, I don't know whether this is going to embarrass you or not, but uh, I used to, I'd say, wait a minute, let me tell you. You used to listen to me when you were 14 years old with a transistor to a radio under your pillow after your mother told you to go to bed. He said, you're right. And I said, uh, did you get a few laughs along the way? And they said, well, sure. I said, do you still listen to me? And that's, of course, when I was working, Ed. <laughs> and uh, they said, yes. And I said, do you still get a, a few laughs? And I said, they said, yes. And I said, that is all the reward I want. You, you, you've, given, you've made my day. You've made my... Uh, that's what you want to hear. Well, that's... Those are the things you want to it's, hear. It's delayed applause. You know... Uh, in, in radio, we have egos, of course. We, you know, this is abstract. Who sits in a studio and talks into a metal piece of, of, of thing called a microphone? A tube. And um, nobody's there. But some millions of people are out there. But you, you, you want to use this theater of the mind. Yes. You use this like a telescope. I look down my microphone. Yeah. And I see listeners. I see a listener. Yeah with an earpiece in his ear, a Walkman on his head, a speaker under a pillow. I just, I visualize that. Yeah. And that's what I do. I see the various communities that we, that we touch. I see the neighborhoods. Yeah. I see the colors of skin. I see the sex of the listener. I see all that. It's just a, you know what I see? those things that you do. What I see? I see a little boy named Ronnie Nagel. Uh. That's my real name, and I'll tell you why I changed it to Ron Britton. Uh, Ronnie Nagel, he's about uh, five years old, and he's at home alone with his grandfather babysitting, and his grandfather has mm. gone to bed at like five o'clock. Uh -huh. And little Ronnie has uh, just seen uh, a Frankenstein movie at the Bard Theater in Louisville, Kentucky meets the wolf man and I've got every light on in the house and I'm scared to death <laughs> but I turn the radio on and hey I got my power now Good my Lord. friends I'm Lord. not alone I got uh, I got my friends now Frankenstein and wolf man you come up the stairs to meet me mm. I got all these friends on the radio here the and they're in the inside the little radio. I, I used to think that they were inside the radio, uh, and uh, they'll take care of you. I'm not afraid anymore. There are more radios in this country than people, and every person in this country every day is touched by the radio for yes. at least a few minutes. Yes. Every single American, during the course of every single day. There's radio, maybe not directly, maybe indirectly, maybe mm -hmm. because somebody else has it on, mm -hmm. but they hear it. The penetration of our industry into the life and homes and workplaces of people is complete.
Mm -hmm. So that means our presence in their homes, their mm -hmm. lives, their workplaces, mm -hmm. and their dashboards is pretty complete. Well, you know what I, I like, uh, Eddie, though? Uh, my personal preference are stations that play uh, 50 in a row or 100 in a row, uh. 200 in a row. Um, actually, I think that these people that like to listen to 100 in a row, I'm going to spoil your party because there's a thing called cable radio now. Mm -hmm. And you can buy it for like $5 a month. And you can get like 50 formats and no announcers, no commercials, no nothing. No creativity. No creativity, no. Just straight music. And that's, if that's what you want, and that's what radio managers think you want. And by the way, people, general managers, by the large part, think that you are the stupidest thing in the world. Uh -huh. Luckily, ours doesn't. We're blessed. Uh, you're blessed. You're uh, truly blessed. blessed. Uh, uh, no, I'm not saying Larry. No, we, no, no, but we all know program directors and general managers that we've all worked for over the years who really don't know what they're doing. They just got there, but they don't know what they're doing. That's right. And they're not people people no. either. They, they don't have people skills. No, they're into computer printouts and ratings printouts and so on, yeah. but, but people skills are, are lacking. And we all have funny stories about them. Oh. Have I got? Uh, you I'm, should write a book. You should write a book. Yeah, I, I've got a funny story about a couple of funny stories about JMK. But be careful about getting us into court. <laughs> well, well. Don't tell no names. <laughs> okay, no names. All right, okay. I won't okay. say any names. We can all tell a funny program director stories. <laughs> okay, so pro those names. program director. I um. Uh, before you do it. Yeah. Before you do it, let me say this. The reason we invited you in here tonight was a tribute to you. Um, I think that Ron Britton, over his years in the radio, had done it the right way. There <clears throat> a tremendous number of fans over the years. And because today, like this very moment, you don't have a program of your own, I think you were so unique to the industry and so unique to the radio dial, that you're going to be one man that people are going to remember. You know, I'm in the Broadcast Hall of Fame. Well, you belong there. Uh, when I quit the one station mm -hmm. and went to the other station, where you it made front page. Yes, theater. Yes, it did. Do you remember? Mm -hmm. uh, I resigned on the air at, at one station. Got in a taxi cab, rode across town to the other station. <laughs> no, boom. no, I got into a limo and a started limo. broadcasting immediately on the station. So it was the fastest broadcast change in history. History, from yeah. one to the other in the F same minute. F Fifteen seconds. It was, it was a unique, here's one thing that you did. So I, obviously a lot of people probably wonder why you're not still there. We probably can talk about that if you wish. Sure. Um, I have a feeling that Ron Britton's program will be back on the radio dial in Chicago very soon. Well, I don't. I, know. I have a feeling that that's this the this case. this this last one really took it out of me. It really made nah, me lose. Uh, nah, nah, nah. You, can't, you can't let that happen. And yeah. I mean, I didn't invite you over here to boost you up, because I'm I'm already a fan. <laughs> I just think that if, if one of these broadcast boobs got get down, that was their mistake. Wow. Don't don't let it overwhelm you. That was their mistake. Uh, I know genius when I hear it, and I know genius when I see it. Well, and this guy is one of those radio geniuses. We're blessed to have here at the Loop a guy by the name of Kevin Matthews. Yes. I don't know how much Kevin knows about your career. Yeah. Or about you. Yeah. But there's some similarities in terms of you both being geniuses. Mm -hmm. Radio geniuses. He's a guy that also uses the radio. I, I, I like uh, Kevin Matthews, except... I didn't like his satire on you. I really oh, didn't. He, he used to call me up and tell me it was all Well, so. and the one other thing that I didn't like that he did, and, and the rest of the stuff I like, he put a blind box number in a broadcasting trade magazine and uh, asked for disc jockeys' uh, tapes and then played them on the air and made fun of them. Well, here's some guy in Sheboygan and uh, trying to get to Chicago. And maybe he doesn't sound that good. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't think that that's, that's very funny. I think what he should have done is put a blind box number in for general manager's resumes <laughs> and then read those on the air. Now, that's, uh, that's humor. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. Okay, uh, I, I understand your point. But as an entertainer himself, yes. 
Uh, he's a very the, the Danny guy. Bonaducci is oh, uh, good. Another, um, yeah. another great talent. So there is and Gary Meyer. Yeah. Uh, he sounds good uh, by himself, too. I, I thought that he would be a little flat, but he's, uh, Gary sounds great. Yeah. See, there, mean, is, there is radio happening in town. There is live radio happening in Chicago. Well, you're about the only one. Worth listening to. You're the only the, the station. Uh, the other uh, North Shore Country Day, uh, I was the, the guest. Uh, 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 on their first program. I'm familiar with the school. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Radio I station. Yeah. For country day, still have a radio station. I don't know. I've learned something. I don't new. even know if they still got a country day. You know, uh, country day <laughs> private school. I or think something. they probably still do. Let me uh, let me do a couple of things here before we go any further. This is WLUP FM 97.9. I'm Ed Schwartz. My special guest tonight is a long-time, world-famous radio broadcaster, Ron Britt, not only former colleague, but old friend, and uh, a, a guy with a, a lot of great stories, a lot of interesting radio experiences. If you are a radio listener, as I am a radio listener, you will enjoy his visit. I must take a quick break. Surely. Ron Britt is here, looking better than ever. <laughs> Thank you. I'm in dress to the nine. <laughs> wearing a tuxedo. You are looking better than anybody around your hands in years. Going back to school to study business. Consider the Elmhurst College Management Program. Everybody Just comfortable and see who's who here. Their experiences. I chose Elmhurst. Johnny Molson, where are you? A good school. Yeah. Ed, Johnny's got all of the bits and everything that, uh, okay. stuff that, you know, you can play. Uh, John Patton, radio consultant, trying to bottle go broadcast. That's, that's, there's John. John, this is Ed Swartz. How are you? Really Barry Edwards, I know. Barry is over here. Hi, Eddie. How are you? Eddie. Uh, Hi, Eddie. Hi, Eddie. I go back to you on uh, WIND on a snowy night when you were first quality education. You took me on the air and we talked for 25 minutes. The Elmhurst College Management Program. Quality education for busy adults. This is for you. A friend of yours, the Dammers. You know them? Sylvia and Don Dammer. They told me to say hi. Really? I'm good friends with Erwin, his son. Yeah, that's their phone number. They live in Niles. He shouldn't be here because he's working at a competing station. No. Okay. 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 It's about nine minutes before the hour of one. Chicago's weather. Today, Monday, cloudy, snow likely by this afternoon. A little bit warmer today, high around 30. Chance of snow, about 60%. Currently, the southeast breeze at 12 miles per hour. Humidity at 77%. And uh, let's see, a little airfield, it's 18 above. At midway, it's 18 above. And at the Loop FM, it's uh, 21, 97.9. I'm Ed Schwartz. We did uh, mention before the sad news in the hockey last night of the game heard on our sister station, WMVP. Edmonton beat Chicago's Blackhawks by a score of 4 to 2. You know the Bears are out of it. Ron Britton is with me in our studios here in Chicago. A couple of things I've got to get out. You've got to let me say these things. Ron has some friends here with him tonight. We're. Uh, there's, I have a few radio guys sitting around here that uh, came in to visit with Ron here. But let me just say this. There are lots of people that get, get to do lots of things with their lives. They get into various occupations and they spend a lot of time doing something. And they get their, uh, their silver watch and their silver belt buckle and their gold watch and after 30 or 40 years of making widgets, they retire. And they have their pension, and they've lived their lives, and hopefully they've felt useful and felt productive and done something. How else? In the show business, a business that eats its young, yes. sometimes you get very few years or very few attempts to do what it is to do, and to show others what it is to do, to make an impact, to make that mark, yeah. take it into that museum. Exactly. I want to say when the history of broadcasting is finally written, and someday it will be, 
that one of those names that would be at the top for having been a creative, gentle genius of a man would be Ron Britton. No. I mean that sincerely. From all the years on Chicago radio, from all of the ideas that we gave birth to, for all of the characters that were born between the two years that we were, because of all of the funny things you thought to say, because of the, uh, all the funny things you thought to call to our attention, you will forever, ever, ever, ever be a legend in the business and in the mind of guys like me who came later. Well, uh, who had guys like you to look at and to listen to thank you. and to envy. Yes. To envy because somehow you knew how to do it. Well, no. And you, no, no. You were there first. No, that, that, that's not it exactly, Eddie. Uh, uh, you envy me because I want... I admire. No. I do, yes, no. I do. Uh, you, um, you looked at me and said, here's a guy that won the lottery because there's a million guys no, 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 out there no, with no, talent. No, 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 no. There have never been a million guys with as big of a talent. But no matter what you say, there never will be a million guys with as much talent as a very few of you were blessed to be born with. Wow. And you got it, and you've had mm -hmm. it, and you'll always have it. It's yours. Enjoy it. Live with it. You've got it. Well, you I... Should, a, and my people have a word. It's a Yiddish word, mm -hmm. okay? Cavelling. Mm -hmm. You should cavell because you've got, you got, you're blessed. Cavell and dry. Nobody can take it away from you. No general manager, no program director, nobody can ever take away what you're born with. Yeah. And you're born with it. I want to say something else. Not only is this man a talented radio performer, a man who has captured theater of the mind and knows how to use it, he is a brilliant artist. One day I was a, a, a guest in his home. Well, his home is like sick. a... Yeah, I took him home. I took him, <laughs> took him a ride home because he wasn't feeling good. He said, you must come in. And I did. And his home is a museum. Now, that was when we lived in a beautiful home at Evanston. Yeah. But I walked in and his home was an art gallery. All of these wonderful works created by him. I don't know if you're still painting. Are you still painting? Well, I'm thinking about I better start painting again because <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to paint house paint and uh, anything. You know? I went to the art gallery on a call. Ron Britton and say, let's do a show. You're, you're, if, you've, if you haven't done a show, no, I you ought to. Because this guy paints with the same fervor that he does radio, which means wow dee wow wow. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I, I was walking around this man's home, and every wall there was another breathtaking uh, canvas. You are, you know, when God passes out talent, he passes out a lot, you, you just took two, two bunches. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that's, that's an interesting thing about uh, saying God and talent. I, I firmly believe, and I, I really, really believe this, that we're all blessed with uh, a certain amount of talent. I don't know why God uh, chose me to, 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 because we're all, we, we're, not, we're not doing it. It's God that's doing it you understand and I don't want to sound like Billy Graham or anything but uh, 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 we are just instruments of God and uh, or I do believe that there's uh, instruments of uh, you want to call it evil or devil or whatever I think there are, there are a lot of evil people in this world too well but that's why they're good people overcoming them bad people that's that's really the that's the secret of life more you know? good than bad and as long as it's more good than bad the good will win. Yes. Well, see, good is, um, or evil is just the absence of good. Very uh, good. So uh, that's, that shows you that that's, uh, you know, positive. Thank you, Brother Ron. <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to let off of that. But, uh, I do say this though that that uh, uh, we're we're very lucky, very privileged to uh, end up 
in Chicago and 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 have an audience that that, that yeah, truly absolutely. likes you and everything, and 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 uh, privilege to entertain people. It's a it's a God given privilege. And, and Chicago's a great radio town. And when you start believing your own press clippings, you're in serious trouble. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what he's talking about. Let me do this. We have got news coming up at 1 a.m. After that, if you'd like to say hello to Ron, our phone number is 591-ROCK, 591-ROLL. Any questions about all the years Ron's been on the air? All the people that I work with, the characters is created. I work with the Beatles, you know, yes. John Lennon. Yes. I work with Janis Joplin. We've got to talk about all those things. Yeah. 591 Rock, 591 Roll. I mean, you are a part of Chicago's radio history, an important part of Chicago's radio history. But the nice thing about it is uh, you are still here to share it with us. So every bit is alive and talented and uh, capable as anybody else in this business. Well, the last station I worked for didn't think so. Well, <laughs> 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 I, I didn't have any talent. <laughs> 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 probably won't be around much longer either. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I know he's a disciple of the devil. And, uh, <laughs> Whatever you do, you know what? What? They don't deserve your energy. You shouldn't even think about them. Well, They're gone. Well, they don't deserve a minute of your brain power. Yeah. Right? There are a lot of good Mormons in the country. <laughs> yes. Don't forget those guys. Yeah, well, uh, you know, I, but they, they, they own the station that I last worked for. Wow. So they're, they're good. And, and, and to, to appease the Mormons, th this is a joke. Uh -huh. uh, uh, the uh, Pope gets a call. And the Monsignor says, I've got some good news and bad news. He said, well, what's the good news? He said, Jesus Christ just called. He said, well, what's the bad news? He said, he just called from Salt Lake City. my Mormon friends. <laughs> no, the Mormons are great. I know. I've got some and, the only thing I could never figure out is why they wanted to get uh, married like about ten wives and have fun, uh, uh, like ten mother-in-laws. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's living hell. <laughs> for some. One of my best friends is a Mormon, and I'll never forget. Yeah. I took him and his wife out for dinner, mm -hmm. and we went to a, um, a chicken restaurant. Yeah. And Mormons don't drink. And what had I ordered for dinner? Beer battered chicken. Oh my <laughs> God. Uh oh. He took one taste and he said, You didn't. Uh -huh. And I said, Yes, I did. And I said, I forgot. <laughs> Well, anyway, that's the story. But, well, so you got to watch it no matter what you do. Well, I, you know, I, I was brought up as a Christian scientist, and um, uh, uh, there's a joke about that too. Uh, the, the, uh, they were down in hell. <laughs> you got to be very careful with religious jokes. Remember well, this, yeah, they, they were down in hell, and uh, and they asked the Catholic why he was down there, and he said, well, well, because uh, oh, I caroused around and so forth. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the it's after midnight. We can move okay. again. Okay. And the Baptist. He said, why are you down here? And he said, well, because I gambled and smoked and drank. And, you know, Baptists don't do that. And he said, okay. Then he came to the Christian scientist and he said, why are you down here? And the scientist said, oh, I'm not down here. <laughs> they don't believe in hell, you know. <laughs> God. There you go. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but Carol was here. We're going to come right back. Ron Britton is on the Loop FM 97.9. You're going to go into Chicago. Are you ready? I'm ready. You're on. Okay. The second uh, earthquake is shaking the Los Angeles area, but still there's no Ooh. word at this point on just how bad it was. Make sure I get a copy on that. I didn't know it was happening. Santa Monica in the region. It gave buildings a shock. Yeah. What's that? Injuries. I did not know there had been an earthquake in California. In Brussels, this is the first I've heard of it. Western allies to have uh, um, contributions over the years. He brought some of them in tonight on tape, and we are going to enjoy some of them. And it will be living radio history. We also want to hear more about that earthquake, Carol, that you mentioned in Los Angeles. Wow, horrible. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Well, what about that Nancy Kerrigan thing? 
I mean, can you figure look, out? I uh, I don't know what the world is coming to. I couldn't figure out the Monica Marcellus business. Along comes the Nancy Kerrigan thing. I mean, what what motivates somebody to do that? They're not all together, I guess. But well, uh, those are the people I've always been afraid of. I've mm. always been afraid that somebody's going to come up and shoot me. And I mm. said, Why did you shoot me? And they said, Well, because. The cows are purple, and the moon jumped over the moon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no kinds wonder. Of, yeah, but those kinds of people aren't a good aim. So don't worry. <laughs> 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 They're not a good aim. No. They'll get the guy in the next chair. Don't worry. <laughs> you don't have to worry about that. Uh, a couple of things I would like to acknowledge. If you happen to pick up uh, the January copy of the Illinois Entertainer, they have a major feature story on Kevin Matthews for January. Oh, wow. Yeah, he's on the cover. So if you pick up the Illinois Entertainer, read the Kevin Matthews story, and uh, it'll tell you all about him. And I did get a plug in there, by the way. <laughs> so I'm glad you mentioned that one of the things that bothered you was Kevin impersonating me. And that was something that the Illinois Entertainer asked him about as well. Uh-huh. And he owned up to it. You see, when I used to be on WGN, he used to call me over there and say hello and tell me he was only kidding and that he was a regular listener. Yeah. So he did that. Listeners didn't know that, but I knew that. Well, how about over at GN, that zany, exciting Wally Phillips? Wasn't he exciting? Well, I got along with him, you know. I well, got along with everybody. Well, well, I burned no bridges. Okay. What about the time he called the hospital and said to a lady that he got the babies ex mixed up. Oh, uh, that wasn't very funny. I have to admit that. <laughs> yeah, because I didn't think it was very funny either. There are certain radio, Irresponsible. Certain radio pranks that radio guys have done over the years yes. that they would think they would forget. Yes, yes. Uh, and uh, almost every one of us has one of those in our in our boudoir. Well, what I'm saying is <laughs> that, that what you should do is you should go on the air and you should, it's kind of the uh, irony here because what you should do on the air is go in on the air make fun of just about everything because everything is a joke really except uh, relationships and uh, God I think well Martin Mull does a bit about God that's even funny you know he's I, he does a thing where he plays a guitar and he says oh please Lord all I want to be is God <laughs> and then the lights go on and obviously I was just kidding <laughs> Uh, but uh, you know, Ron, there are probably ways to do almost anything. Yeah. Depending on where you, you approach, how you approach it. Yes. You can do it from a gentle point of view, from a funny point of view. If, there, if there's no victim. That's right. There you go. If there is no victim. Right. And as long as as uh, see, I never took myself seriously. I you still are, don't. You were not malicious, you see. And that's the difference between the guys they call the shock jocks, yes. the Howard Stearns, oh, well, yeah. and, and you. You well, never had to have a victim. Nobody had to die for Ron Britton to get a laugh. Yeah. And because nobody had to die for him to get a laugh, that's your uniqueness. And these guys that came along later, yeah. the ones with the shock jock title, who have to have a victim. Mm -hmm. They're malicious. They have to hurt somebody, or somebody must die. Yeah or be hurt, or be a victim well, of it all. Well, Those guys prove time and time again that they're really not that funny. They don't have punchlines. They don't have a way to end what I, they began. I, I will say that Howard Stern is funny. He is. Yeah, he's, he's got a lot of funny you stuff. You know why? Because it's an app. He's not malicious. He's dirty, yeah. but it's not. It's all <laughs> I mean, an he, app. He's laughing at himself. Yeah. So that makes it okay. But he knows how to do it so yeah, well. Yeah, he does. You might remember a, a comedian who's uh, passed away a few years ago who also used to do that, Andy Kaufman. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, he mm -hmm. was brilliant. He was brilliant. But he was so into it mm -hmm. that he would, he, he would get lost in it. People yeah. actually thought he believed it. He would create characters and he would go so far into that character he couldn't get him back. He, he uh, didn't he wrestle some uh, girl exactly. on stage? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> he became a wrestler. That was his act for a year. That's all he did was wrestle women. <laughs> <laughs> and several of them beat his well, ass good. I know <laughs> it. It was great. I thought it was, it was an act. Uh, yes. Exactly. It was yeah. completely right. He had these other personas. He would come out. People think, would think they were coming to hear Andy Pop and tell jokes. Yeah. 
He would come out as this character, alter ego, Tony Clifton. Oh, that was the Tony Clifton. Tony was Clifton. the best. Yes. <laughs> and he said, "Son, it talk like that," and, yeah. and he, he was a Las Vegas guy. Yeah. And, uh, and, and he might read poetry for two hours. <laughs> <laughs> and if he would like it, we could get up and get out because that was the end. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, and that was it. He would get so into it. <laughs> Yeah, you do have a good memory for those things. Andy Coffin is, I think, was one of the most brilliant guys. Latka from uh, Taxi. Remember he did the, the, the television series <laughs> Taxi? Yeah. Latka Gravis. Yeah. The mechanic. 591 Rock and 591 Roll. If you want to say hello to Ron Britton, before we answer the phone, you were telling me when you changed your name. Okay, you really want to know yeah, this? Tell story? Well, I hope I don't hurt anybody's feelings or anything like this. A lot of people change their names for ethnic reasons. Well, okay. okay. I, uh, I I went into, uh, I got my big break in Cincinnati, where I had 75% uh, of the listening audience when I left. It That's was, a very uh, big accomplishment. That, uh, I think in the book of Guinness Records or something. But anyway, I went in and uh, I got my first big break at uh, WSAI in Cincinnati. And they said, well, what are you doing on the air? As. I said, well, Ron Magel. I mean, that's my name. And the manager of the station, who had a shaved head, looked like an SS officer, <laughs> said, uh, oh no, you're not going on the air with the name Ron Magel. That sounds too Jewish. And I said, well, it's not Jewish, it's German. It's Mongol, I guess. Or, he said, well, you're not going on the air with that name, Ron Magel. And I said, well, gee, I, I, I say, Ron Magel, music with Magel. <laughs> and it was, you know, that operation, and I thought, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah, it was great. He said, no, you're going on the air as uh, Ron Sinatra. I said, you Ron Sinatra. Um, and uh, I said, well, people call me the London Kid because I dress in English clothes, and uh, I, I have a Jaguar, and uh, uh, I like, um, I, I'm an Anglophile, and so that's it. You will be Ron Britton, and we'll spell your name just like the country, B-R-I-T-A-I-N, and that's where it was born. Yeah. How about that? And that was... Uh... And, and, and then the King B thing came from uh, the kids that worked for me, 